what is up ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls today's video is going to be a bit of a different one uh, maybe a little controversial you've seen the title and the thumbnail a bit of a bold statement with the title however let's break down what I mean by it uh, firstly the background footage is just my UPC opening playing in the background so you can ignore that there uh, it's just for some visual stimulation so ultimately I believe that Pokemon do not care whether it is hard for you to obtain a product or whether a product's demand significantly outweighs its supply. In fact, I think Pokemon intentionally to some degree print with this in mind. Uh, that is, I think they print a lower supply than the demand would indicate they need. Now, why does this mean that Pokemon don't care? Well. I use Discord and I'm in some Pokemon Discords, I use Facebook and I'm in a lot of Pokemon groups for buying, selling, trading, and naturally conversations arise when a product such as the Evolving Skies Booster Box is being sold for more than £250, or Amazon sells out of the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection in 3 minutes. There is very often conversations about how Pokemon know that this product is in demand, so they're going to print more of it. Pokemon knows that it's quote, easy money, so they're going to print more of it. Very often I see people make bold claims that items are going to be printed to demand. Except the reality of the situation is, Pokemon printing more of it is really bad for business long term. It might be great short term, but long term it would be very, very damaging to Pokemon and I'll explain why. Pokemon's success is massively and significantly influenced by the secondary market. To explain, the primary market are people that buy products from Pokemon themselves through retail stores and online stores that stock these products. The secondary market is the next layer down from that. This is when you trade your cards with friends, perhaps you get a really good pull and you sell it to buy some more products, perhaps you really want a card so you go and buy it from someone on Facebook. Uh, this is the secondary market. One of the biggest reasons the Pokemon boom happened in 2020 and 2021 was because of the secondary market. I would go as far as saying that to some degree for Pokemon, as a business, scalpers are good. How is this the case? Well, simple, it creates massive demand. Here's a thought experiment for everyone listening or watching that. Think back through 2022 and the purchases you have made of Pokemon. Have you ever made or attempted to make an incredibly quick and spontaneous purchase of a product? Perhaps a Charizard GPC, perhaps a restock of Evolving Skies, perhaps Brilliant Stars. Have you ever made or genuinely considered purchasing a product above the RRP or above the historic rate of that, uh, such as uh, a Charizard GPC from a store for £150? Now, while thinking about that, have you then also put any of these purchases on a credit card? Obviously, you don't have to answer down below. This isn't a survey. Um, just, just a thought experiment. Have you dipped into an overdraft? Um, maybe you've used a pay in three service because you couldn't afford the full payment then and there. Perhaps you borrowed money from a friend or called in an early Christmas gift. Now finally, ask yourself if you would have made that purchase then and there if you were confident that that product would still be available under the same conditions and price in a month. For a lot of you, the answer still might be yes, but for a very respectable amount of you, you'll say no. You wouldn't have used a credit card for that, you would have waited to buy it when you had spare money. In many cases, you wouldn't have ever purchased that item because a month would have passed and you would have wanted to buy something else. Um, now you're left with what you feel like is no choice. If you want that product and it's available, you have to dip into the overdraft or credit card. You have to pay a little more than you'd have liked. So why is that good for Pokemon? Why is that something Pokemon would want to encourage? The simple reality is, is because you're then more likely to buy products with the concern that the product isn't going to be around long enough. Let's look at Evolving Skies. We've seen this set go up to 250 to 300 pound a booster box. It has a raw card value of 2,500 pound for a complete set. Moonbrion is 500 pound on eBay. Graded, it's over a thousand pounds. Now, Pokemon could print this again and again and again and tank those prices, and that's great for you if you want to complete the set. Or, what Pokemon could do 
is in about two years in Gen 9 they could release a similarly stacked set, some shiny Charizard Hype Beast EX Omega Alt Art card in a set with maybe some evolutions, a Rayquaza, a Mew, Mewtwo, Lugia, and a whole bunch of sought after cards and Pokemon. What do you think is going to happen then? You know instantly that you need to buy that set, because you know a year after that it is going to do the same as Evolving Skies did. It's going to do what Brilliant Stars is about to do, which, by the way, is going to do exactly what Evolving Skies did in about 6 to 9 months. Uh, you should fully expect Brilliant Stars to creep towards £200 a booster box, and Charizard being £300 plus on its own. Uh, while we're on that brief discussion, uh, I would keep an eye on Chilling Rain and Fusion Strike in the next 6 months too. Uh, anyways, I drifted. The point is, when that set comes out and it's hyped up, you know it's going to turn into Evolving Skies 2.0. Not only that, but you know that even when Evolving Skies was as in demand as it is, even when Celebration UPCs were as in demand as they were, they're not getting reprinted. You have the confidence that your purchase will have some long term value and desirability. I mentioned before about how people shout that it would be easy money. Pokemon know it's sought after. Newsflash, Pokemon aren't struggling financially. Why would they spend the time printing a set that's 15 months old when they can print a set they're releasing in 4-5 to five months and still generate just as much revenue, all while continuing to progress the TCG? Furthermore, and arguably the defining element of the point I'm trying to make about Pokemon not caring about you, is why do they then not subsequently reprint older stuff? Why are we not getting more Hidden Fates? Why are we not getting more Shining Legends? Where's our Wizard of the Coast era reprints? Where's the Sky Ridge reprint? I'm fairly confident in saying that anything from 2020 or earlier is done and dusted and out of print. Where's the late SM era reprints? Team Up is £20 a pack. Where's the reprint of that? Surely that's easy money. The reality is Pokemon is so successful because they know not to oversaturate a product and to keep an element of scarcity there. Pokemon as a company and a brand do an amazing thing of making what they sell and the products they have seem very wholesome and friendly, and they are. I fully believe that Pokemon as a brand is one of the most wholesome brands out there. Pokemon never die in the games, they only faint, they have very pet-like characteristics, you build a relationship with them, they have meaning, things are very friendly, uh, the products they create are often very wholesome, you know, plushies, festive things like Christmas ornaments and Halloween ornaments, etc. However, Pokemon is ultimately a business. It's a media franchise worth $100 billion. The CEO of Pokemon isn't losing sleep because some people can't get hold of a Charizard UPC. In fact, he's probably trying to work out how to make you spend more money. Don't get me wrong, there are people at Pokemon that will care, that will think more products should be printed. The reality is, Pokemon probably pay the statisticians, mathematicians and even psychologists that are a lot smarter than you or I am to tell them exactly how much of a product to make in order to capitalise on not upsetting people too much by underprinting, but also making it available enough that everyone feels like they've got a shot at getting what they want. And ultimately, that's the point I'm trying to make. Pokemon's primary market is heavily influenced by its secondary market. We've first hand seen this. In 2020 when graded cards shot to the moon in value and people were able to sell sealed product from literally only a year prior for twice what they paid for it, what happened? Pokemon sold more product than they ever did. Was this product good? Was it hyped? Vivid Voltage, good set. Looking back, is it even in the top 4 of Sword and Shield era? The same with Shining Fates, arguably going to go down as the worst holiday set of the generation. So how did these sets sell in record time? Because the secondary market made people run to the primary market and want to buy items. In some cases this is to scalp them, in some cases it's to hold them and sell them years later, in some cases it's to open them. However to Pokemon it doesn't matter. £100 being paid to Pokemon from a scalper is the same as £100 being paid to Pokemon from a 9 year old child's birthday present. It's the same as £100 paid from a 32 year old who keeps sealed boxes in their bedroom hoping to retire before they're 50. Pokemon is a business and they know how to keep their products sought after and in demand. And this is what I mean when I say that they do not care about you. They do not care if you couldn't get a Charizard GPC because all it means is deep down statistically you're more likely to try harder or spend money you didn't plan on spending on a future product. 
the secondary market value is going to still exist, which keeps people with those products happy. Because you've got to remember, reprints upset people that already have the product. If you have an Umbrian alt art today you could sell for £500 and all of a sudden a million evolving skies booster boxes show up, your Umbreon will likely plummet to £100 and that will frustrate you. Pokemon also don't want to do that because that will drive you away as a customer. Pokemon is incredibly driven by the secondary market. Cards going up in value, being scalped, being sold years later for 10 times the price they were paid for ultimately means Pokemon make more money than they ever did. Reprinting sets into oblivion just so Sean, the 24 year old who really likes Umbreon can get his old art is just going to cause all of that to crash. So that's my point. Pokemon do not care if you can get their product or not, and they do not care if you want a certain product or not, because what they're currently doing is working very, very well for them. It's why I always chuckle to myself when people on Facebook that don't see things from the side of the market make claims about items being reprinted to demand. That's never going to happen. Pokemon are never going to print a product to demand. Even in Japan, when they print to demand, literally you order nine months ahead and they then print that item for you specifically. If you don't order within that two week window, that's it, you miss out. And even then, that's never really a print to demand. Look at the Golden Celebrations box from Japan, which I think is three to four times the value people paid for it. And that was quite literally printed to demand. Anyone could sign up and say, yes, I want one and they would print one for you. It's the same with the Precious Collection, which I think is already, it's not even out yet, and it's already two and a half times what it cost. It was printed to demand. So yeah, that was today's video. I do hope you enjoyed it. A bit of a controversial one. I don't think some people will like hearing that, but it's the reality of the situation. A strong secondary market and a scarcity of products causes more and more people to try to buy from the primary market and that's ultimately all Pokemon cares about. Anyways, I do appreciate you guys watching. My next video will probably be a Silver Tempest release video. I'm trying to get back into the swing of videos, but I'm finding my real life is very busy currently. As you may be able to tell by my voice, I've been a little ill this last week. Uh, I think my daughter may have given me a cold. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, take care and peace.